Hey folks, welcome to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer. I'm going to be your host for today. And on today's show, I have Barry Arwood. And Barry is brand new to New South. He is the newest member uh, over at Grand Country Jubilee. And so we're really excited to talk to him and about his musical career. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, saw him the other day over there and he did a great job. Uh, we do give tips about how to make your Branson vacation better and periodically I will bring out the flavor of Branson Dining Guide. If you're a visitor in town uh, and you haven't got a copy of this, you really should find this in your hotel lobby. Um, this lists every restaurant in town by category. So if you're like, hey, I want to go eat pizza or Italian, you can go there and see all the pizza and Italian restaurants or maybe you want uh, American or you want to know where the coffee shops are, whatever. You can go here and see over 300 restaurants and in the back of the book there's about 25 coupons that can help save you money. So this fits great in a purse or you can just have it in your car as you're driving around. Uh, and so we recommend the Flavor Brands and they're in their 17th year this year of helping visitors find that perfect place to eat. And everybody's got to eat in Branson. And guess what? In Branson, calories don't count when you're on vacation. So We'll be back in just a second with Barry Arwood with New South. Hang tight. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. And today on the show, for the first time ever, I have Barry Arwood. <laughs> Barry, good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate so, it. So you are the new guy on as part of New South at, on Grand Country Jubilee. Yeah, I'm the new guy. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I saw you there the other night. I thought you did an awesome job. Thank you very um, much. And I don't say that just because you're sitting here. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't know a lot about you. And, and I'm going to guess that we have a lot of people that watch that don't know a lot about you as well. And so kind of take us back and tell us about your journey to Branson and what you've done since you've been here. Well, I'm I am the new guy with New South, but I'm kind of a, a newish person in Branson. I've only been here for about six years, but uh, I was born and raised in Joplin, Missouri, just okay. a couple hours up the road. And as a kid, I grew up coming to all the shows. With I grew up coming to see Dino and Shoji and go to Silver Dollar City for World Fest and Kids Fest. And did your parents drag you along to that, or did you like come willingly? Oh yeah, oh I, I came willingly. Okay. Um, my entire family has always been pretty musical, um, and I get my love of music pretty honestly from my grandfather. Actually, um, he was a music minister for mm. thirty years of, up in Joplin. He was a master mason. Um, and any time they had any type of event with the Masons and the Eastern Stars, he was always requested to sing. And I actually didn't realize this until I got older. Um, my grandpa used to fill in with the Foggy River Boys oh. whenever one of them would have to be gone for a while. And I didn't realize that until I made the connection with Mike and him playing with them. And then my grandma told me that that's who my grandpa sang with when he would come down to Branson for a week or two. Yeah, and so, so. so we got to stop right there. Hold that thought <clears throat> because if you're not familiar with the Foggy River Boys, it was one of the first groups mm -hmm. in Branson. Yes, when Branson was just getting started. So, yep. Okay. They uh, they go way back. Yeah. And it's great music across the board. And I uh, grew up coming here as a little kid. Uh, always had a love of music, uh, fostered definitely by my grandpa, but. I think the first time I ever performed in front of anybody was at church, and I was three. And I just had a goofy little, cute, adorable three-year-old wine, mm. and that was it. And I've always been a bit of a ham. I'm a little theatrical and energetic and always have more energy than I really should have any reason to have. But um, I sang through high school. Uh, I was in band. Um, played multiple instruments, and then when I got to college, I actually focused on 
my my I was a music major, okay. but I focused on classical bassoon. And if you don't know what a bassoon is, mm. it looks like a bedpost with a little white ring around the top, and it yeah. sounds like someone sat on a duck. Yeah. And that's about it. And I made it to my junior year and started dabbling with voice lessons a little bit, taking it more seriously instead of just doing it for fun. And my focus changed very quickly. Um, I was very blessed with a, a, a tenor voice that sits pretty high. And so they, they wanted me to start doing more vocal stuff. And um, after college, uh, I never really got to do any of the big productions in college. Uh, my high school didn't really have any of that stuff. So I did some community theater work with Joplin Little Theater and um, a couple of the other uh, Cherokee County Arts, which is just across the state line in Kansas. Right. And I got to do Rent, uh, Hairspray, oh. Spamalot, uh, all of these big musicals that I really just, it lit a fire and that passion just kind of, it was, it was always there and now I had an outlet for it. Mm -hmm. um, I, start, I started auditioning here in Branson and I moved here in 2017 to uh, take part in uh, Smoke on the Mountain. Okay. Um, that was why I moved up here. And ever since I came to Branson, I have been very, very blessed. Another door just continues to open. More opportunities have opened. Um, I joined a group called The Sons out at Silver Dollar City. And I've been with them for four years. I still perform with them okay. um, uh, five days a week in the morning. Um, and then last year when we brought our show into town, it opened the door schedule wise for me to do more things. So I got to do a couple shows at King's Castle Theater and I got to know more people in town, uh, got to interact with a few more people. Um, I met Mike last year kind of in passing and then this year. Um, whenever uh, David, their lead singer from the last six years, uh, he and his family decided they wanted to move back home. Mike gave me a call and asked if I'd be interested, and mm. I said, absolutely. And so now you're gonna be one of the hardest working musicians in town, or entertainers <laughs> in town. Um, right now I'm doing 15 shows a week yeah. um, at three different theaters, yeah. and I love it. I wouldn't yeah. ask to be doing anything else. Um, last night uh, they had the Branson Show Awards, and Doug Gabriel was inducted into their Hall of Fame. Doug Gabriel has been here for 35 years at this point. He do, the, him and his family do an incredible show. And it, he, he put it very, very bluntly. And sometimes it's hard to imagine that we actually get to do this for a living. Mm. We, get, we wake up and we just get to perform for people, smile, sing, laugh, dance, what we love to do every day and we get to do it for other people. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's a, you had to pin, pinch yourself. And so, so when you were growing up, did you say like, you kind of knew you wanted to get into the whole musical world then? Um, I was always musical and musically inclined, but I never really, I never imagined that I would be <laughs> on stage performing and doing anything. Okay. And the last couple years have been it's been a wild ride, yeah. I, and I've just I've been blessed beyond what I could have ever imagined. When, when did you graduate from college? Um, funny story. Um, or maybe you didn't. I don't uh, know. <laughs> I actually I officially graduated last year. Okay. Um, I got my diploma last year, and there were some m miscommunications with the music department and the official office keeping and everything. And um, I actually had to stop going for a little bit because life happens and right, right. Had, to, had to be an adult. Okay. And I contacted the university to find out how many classes I would need to take to try to finish. And they told me that I actually had enough to finish. I could have graduated five years ago. <laughs> so I, uh, <laughs> she, she got on the phone with the dean. Um, it was already too late to apply to graduate, but they, they put my application through, and I got to walk across the stage and accept my diploma last year. That is a funny story. <laughs> and I, like, you just never know when you ask questions, like, what's going to come out of that question, right? <laughs> That's a funny story. Um, but the reason I ask that, because I don't think you're very old. And 
there's this conception in town that Branson is just old entertainers, and we're always dispelling that myth. Yeah. And I, I feel like you're a young entertainer, even though you've been here five years, I don't think like you were out of college for like 30 years before then, right? Like, <laughs> like you're a young entertainer. Um, I, I got a little bit of a late start. Um, I'm, I'll be 35 later on in this year. Um, sometimes I wake up and I feel like it, and sometimes, yeah. most of the time, yeah. I don't. But even for me, the majority of performers in town, I would say, are younger than me. Um, the the mis like the misconception of Branson is just a bunch of sixty five year old performers is there are some incredibly talented performers who are that fifty sixty age range the, a lot of the performers are that twenty five to thirty five um, and there there are some uh, I'm I'll, I'm old enough I'll call them kids but there's some nineteen twenty twenty two year olds that are incredible mm. and sometimes I think I'm energetic and goofy and they can run circles around me yeah yeah and okay well I still think you're young um, <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, I'll take it as I long as think, I can I still think you're young. Um, <laughs> we're gonna be back in just a second with more with Barry hang tight we'll be right back <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We are talking to Barry Arwood, who is the newest member of New South over at Grand Country Jubilee. And so maybe someone's never seen the show before. Uh, you're in a couple different shows yeah. at the theater. And mm -hmm. of course, there's a whole bunch of shows there. So kind of kind of just walk us through uh, Grand Country Jubilee. And uh, then you also do the New South Gospel. And if you want to talk about any other shows, that's great too. So. Yeah, um, so the Grand Country Resort is beautiful and you could you could spend two weeks there and never have to leave there's so much different things but um, they have a couple incredible shows that run throughout the week and uh, I'm fortunate enough that I am in the evening show uh, six days a week it's called the Grand Jubilee um, I'm and I'm the new lead singer of the quartet it's kind of a southern gospel style quartet and they have um, a female singer named Jackie Brown um, they, the main MC, uh, the host for the evening is Mike Patrick, and uh, they have a co-host and comedian, uh, Jamie Hagee, and they are all just, I am incredibly blessed to be on the same stage. The amount of talent and awards that everyone on that stage have won over the years. Uh, the Rhinestone Mafia is the name of the band, and I don't think there's a single member up there that hasn't been named player of the year for their yeah. particular instruments mm -hmm. um they've got fiddle players pianos drums guitar steel guitar um got a little bit of a, a little bit of a country kick to it uh, a little southern gospel um, we do some stuff from the 50s and the 60s and uh, all the way up to the 90s um and it's a lot of fun a lot of energy um and it's, you never know quite what you're gonna have, but it's always very family friendly. Right. Um, I, I love how much I see the little kids out there that you wouldn't think they know any of the music, but they're just bopping along and having a good time. J uh, and, uh, Jim Dandy is one of the characters in the show, and he seems to be a, a pretty solid favorite for yeah. a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, and I, we've had a lot of these folks that he's mentioning on previous shows, so if you want to go back and watch any of them, you can. Um, the, but what I would call it is a what I call a traditional Branson show, yeah. meaning it has an MC, there are comedy segments throughout, and yep. then, you know, this different, different types of entertainment yes uh happening and um so great show um what do you like best about the show like what is do you have a personal favorite um my personal favorite would probably be the variety of what i get to do at least um i i we get to sing some traditional southern gospel music 
And then we get to turn around and we we get to sing some like traditional country music, a little bit older country. And then we also can turn it around and we'll sing some Elvis. And it's enough of just vastly different things that it, it never quite feels like it's, it's, oh, it's just a country show or, oh, it's just a gospel show. It's a little bit of everything and I get to take part in it and it keeps me on my toes. It keeps everything mm -hmm. a little bit, a little bit uh, fresh every time. And we get to show our own personalities on stage as oh, well. Oh yeah, most, most we're, definitely. We're not necessarily playing a character on stage. Every now and then if somebody cuts up and gets the, gets the giggles or starts laughing, it's just because we as performers get along that well. And now one of us have made the other laugh a little bit. Yeah. So I think if I remember in the show, Luke had a little ego problem in the gospel number, didn't Luke? <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. He he he's the tenor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Anyway, we, we, Luke, we have to have a little talk. Yep. Um, <laughs> the the tenor gets to be the diva, and everybody's okay with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just had to throw that in there just to mess with him a little bit. Um, you're also in this New South Gospel show that yes. goes once a week on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Not including Thanksgiving, by the way. Yep. But um, talk a little bit about that show as well. Uh, so it's uh, th the name of the quartet is New South, and the, the show is called New South Gospel. Um, the band is with us. Uh, uh, Jackie Brown and Jamie both uh, are with us. And then Tracy Heaston actually mm -hmm. plays piano for us. And it really is two hours of just good southern gospel music um if you kind of think of some of the reunion concerts that the gaithers will put together or uh like just the imperials and stuff like that uh we do some newer gospel music as well as some very very traditional standards on the southern gospel music and um mark is our bass and he he can sing with anyone out there. He has, he has a incredible voice. It, yeah. He really is just a one of a kind guy. Yeah. And Luke and Eric, the the other two members of the quartet, they we all get to feature some solos, and th their voices are incredible. And yeah. it's just it's a lot of fun. We get to go through some of the history of Southern gospel music and kind of where it started and how it grew and. Then in the 50s, when everybody started getting televisions in their houses, it really boosted the popularity up again. And yeah. a lot of a lot of what we do is modeled after some of those shows um, up in Springfield, Missouri. That's about an hour north of here. Um, people might remember uh, the late great Red Foley. Right. Well, he hosted a show called the Ozark Jubilee. Right. And it was a a, a very similar styled show. It was a, it was a southern gospel hour of mm -hmm. music and they ha they'd have quartets and performers and some really clean comedy and it was televa it was televised nationwide and a lot of a, a lot of stuff is kind of modeled after that a lot of Branson yeah. is yeah. modeled after that good clean family performance and humor where you you never felt like you needed to cover the, the ears right. right um so how long did it like you were hired <clears throat> before the other guy left, correct? Yes. And so how long did it take you to learn the part? Um, I was very fortunate that he, uh, David was still here whenever I got hired. So I got to, I got to rehearse with him a little bit. I got to ask him about music and questions and, um, I got to be there and watch the, watch the show from backstage. Um, uh, Mike called me to let me know that David and his family were planning on leaving, asked if I'd be interested in joining. And it was right at two weeks, maybe maybe two and a half weeks, um, because we weren't sure when David was actually going to leave, um, okay. because they knew they wanted to go back home, but there's a lot that goes into right. relocating and selling right. selling the house and everything. And fortunately for them, they were able to sell their house and be ready to move very quickly. And it was a little quick. It was a little bit quicker than I think anybody <laughs> thought it would be. <laughs> But it was it was good for everyone involved, yeah. and so you had to pick it up pretty fast. Yeah, yep. yeah, and I think you did a great job doing that. Thank you, um, thank you very much. So, folks, let me tell you when these shows are. They perform six nights a week, 
Uh, through December 30th. Mm -hmm. And so the night you take off is what night? Um, uh, Sunday night. Sunday is the night. only evening that we, we, we don't have a show. Yeah. And so the, the folks, so I always say the folks at Grand Jubilee are probably some of the hardest working people because they do a lot of shows. And then, and that's at 730. And then this New South Gospel is Thursdays at three, yep. not including Thanksgiving through December 8th. And then real quick, let's, you're doing the suns or yeah. the sun at Talk about real quick about that then. Yeah. Um, uh, so Tuesday through Saturday morning at 10 a.m., uh, I'm with a, uh, the original uh, group that uh, I was fortunate to kind of start here in town with. Uh, we're called the Suns Music Celebration, and we are at the Majestic Theater. Um, it's the old historic Majestic Steakhouse that mm -hmm. is right at the intersection of Gretna and Rowark. Right. Um, it's a beautiful little theater. Part of the building has kind of been remodeled and renovated. And uh, we do a little bit of a uh, little bit of gospel and 50s, 60s, John Denver to the Beatles and everything in between. Um, we were at Silver Dollar City for a long time, and with all the different music festivals, we performed in all of those year round mm. as a resident group. Um, we got to bring all of our music in town, and um, I've I've been very blessed uh, to be with them for the last four years. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. that's a that's a newer show there, and I always, you know, it's always an interesting transition to go from performing out at Silver Dollar City to in Branson, and there's been lots of people that have done that. Yep. Um, doesn't mean it's always easy, but <laughs> a lot of people have done it and uh, have been successful in doing it. So that's another place people can catch you over at the Majestic Theater. It's a very small, intimate theater, uh, so I think if you're looking for that intimate experience, definitely a great opportunity for them to have that. Absolutely. So. Okay, folks, we're going to be back to just wrap up the show in just a moment. Barry, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me, and everyone, enjoy Branson. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. I want to thank Barry for coming out today. Be sure to go see the show at Grand Country. Um, it's Grand Country Jubilee. They perform six nights a week through December 30th. It's at 7.30. The only night they don't perform is Sunday night. So you can see them Monday through Saturday. Also check them out, New South Gospel. That's Thursdays at 3 p.m. through December 8th, but not including Thanksgiving. So a couple times you can see him over there. Uh, and then he's over at the Majestic Theater with the Suns um, show that's over there as well. Um, next week's artist um, is Mike Walker. I haven't had Mike Walker on the show for about four years, so I'm looking forward to catching up with him. That's Mike Walker, Lasting Impressions. Um, we're excited to have him on the show next week. Upcoming events, um, we've got the Oak Ridge Boys tonight in Branson at the Mansion Theater. We also have them doing several other dates in November. Uh, the Gatlin Brothers in November, the Bellany Brothers tomorrow, October 21st, and then November 19th. We've got Gene Watson, October 22nd, and November 11th. Um, and then we've got, and that's all at the Mansion Theater, and they've got a few other shows going on there, special events. We've got Daniel O'Donnell coming to town for a special limited engagement November 2nd through the 17th. And this is in addition to all the other great, awesome shows that we have that are here all the time. Uh, these are just special events that are coming up. Um, if, you, uh, if you're thinking about coming to Branson, you still have time for the fall, just a little bit of time. And you know you never know when those colors are going to exactly change. But uh, if you haven't come, you still have time. And then November 1st, we're going to Ozark Mountain Christmas. And that'll run through the end of the year. And it's a perfect time to come to Branson. The shows change. A lot of them are doing Christmas shows, either partial or full Christmas shows. We have Silver Dollar City with over 6 million lights. We have three light drive throughs Lights of Joy. Uh, over at Shepherd of the Hills, they've got a light drive through as well as the zoo. Um, so if you need help planning your vacation, whether it's fall or Christmas, call the folks at ibranson.com 
or you can call them at 877-ENTERTAIN. You'll reach a local person right here in Branson that can help plan your entire Branson vacation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week on Play Branson.